Thermal traffic, Challenger, November 768 Echo, clearing 35 on Bravo 1 for parking. Okay, taxiing out uh, from Thermal Aviation at the Jack Cochran Airport, Thermal Airport. Yellow Tango Romeo Mike. And we've got the new Hero 8 running on the left wing. It is on a fixed mount with an ND-16 filter on it today. This is the first flight for the new GoPro 8, and we're going to see how much better it is than the GoPro 7, which I normally fly. It's on the wing of a Cub Crafters Carbon Cub LSA. And uh, it's Wednesday, November 6th, here in uh, Thermal, California. A very pretty day today. It's like basically no wind. Let's see what the case has to say. Density altitude 1,400. Jacqueline Cochran, Regional Airport. Automated weather observation 1749er, Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility 1 0. Sky condition clear. Temperature 2 8 Celsius. Dew point 0 6 Celsius. Altimeter 2 9 -er, 8 9 -er. Remarks. Density altitude 1000. Yep, got uh, no wind. And we're uh, taxiing out to runway 1 2. Now this is a Carbon Cub LSA with a power to weight ratio close to a P51. So it really, uh, it's got off-road uh, tires on it and all. It doesn't really need a runway out here. But uh, it gets all the normal airplane people upset when I take off from the taxiways. And also I go play the game out here. I only need about 100 feet to get off. But the more with these big uh, Tundra tires, the more I roll around on the asphalt, the more they wear down, so I try. Hello, Captain Bonanza 707 off of Delta, departing to the west, climbing through 1,100. And do a little run up here to, got electronic ignition, so nothing changes on uh, changing the mag sources. And, uh, the only reason to run up out here is to get the oil a little warm. Go so back to the GoPro. Uh, if you look on the uh, YouTube channel, on my YouTube channel, you'll see uh, lots of historical GoPro footage as I follow the GoPro up from the GoPro 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and now the 8. The 7 was a big breakthrough for flying uh, video uh, because it basically handled, did stabilization so well that it really, on a shaky airplane like a Cub, it really didn't uh, require uh, a gimbal anymore. And now the uh, Hero 8's supposed to be even better, so we'll see. It's supposed to be just rock solid. So uh, anytime I'm getting any turbulence at all, I'll call it out here in the video and uh, then we can uh, compare it with uh, what what the camera is seeing, which should be uh, mostly rock solid stable. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, thermal air traffic come to your office. It's going to take off runway one two, and we'll be meeting right turn to the south. No factor one seven three five. Most of the people here have ADSB, but some people still don't, and they sneak in and scare me. But uh, everybody else in the pattern, I can always see. So here we go. No runway needed. So that was basically I took off across the width of the runway rather than the length. Quite a revolution in the fly. I love it. So 
now we're proceeding south of Thermal Airport. I'll make a call here. Uh, thermal air traffic coach through Memphis, south of the airport, going to head southeast. And we'll uh, come up across Thermal Club, which is a race racing club. Now right off the nose is the BMW Performance Center. And then over to the left, uh, our series of race tracks and go-kart tracks, and even residential housing. But you can see uh, down below here, they are playing around with their BMWs, slipping and sliding, and, and uh, having fun. And then over here is the racetrack complex. And up here about uh, just off to the left of the airplane, uh, well, pretty much straight on for the GoPro right now, you can see a series of very high-end condos that are being built all the way around the racetrack. So it's, you know, home and, and race. And it's uh, just south of the uh, 1735 runway here at Thermal. So I'm not seeing... Right now, flying, I have uh, very little turbulence, very smooth day today. So it's not a very good uh, good test of the stabilization. It can get pretty bumpy out here depending on how hot it is. And I've got the power pulled back to uh, what is it? Uh, the cruise for the Carbon Cub, which is basically 40% power. Off, uh, I'll swing around here. You can see off the nose on the horizon is the Salton Sea. And over on the left, to the east, you see the, uh, the low set of hills and uh, mountains out there running north and roughly north and south. Uh, just uh, to make up the eastern edge of the Coachella Valley. That's where the San, San Andreas Fault is located. As a matter of fact, in certain areas there, you can actually see the uplift and thrust of the uh, of the uh, two plates. Uh, but uh, the reason it looks so rugged is uh, the Earth is uh, colliding with itself. The Pacific plate is running into the continental plate right here, and uh, as you get up closer, you can see the rocks, uh, sediment rocks are all pushed up almost vertical in a lot of places out here. And the other thing that happens along uh, this fault line out here is uh, that there are uh, periodic places where there's a lot of water that rushes to the surface and creates these oasis of the palm trees. And, uh, you know, it'd be just stark desert and you come along and see a lush area with lots of water. And what it is is water that's bubbling up out through that fault uh, from very, very deep down and, uh, and creating an, an oasis. And there are a lot of them all the way along this fault line. There are a few in farther in and down along the eastern edge of the Salton Sea, there's actually some uh, hot water geysers, like just like uh, Yellowstone. Taking traffic, Grizzly 07 is a King Air, and we'll be taxiing from the run-up area as the departure end of uh, our, the, uh, yeah, and we'll be taxiing down. I don't know whether you can notice it in the camera, but... This valley. Several traffic. Now, Cardinal 34149, we departed your runway 12, we're going straight out. We're starting to get uh, turbulence right now, light to moderate turbulence. And, uh, I see no traffic on 17 or 35. We're bouncing around, on, and if you carefully look at the camera, we're actually flying sideways right now. And all sorts of wind currents happen up and down this valley, and right now we got uh, a wind out of the northwest that just kicked up to 23 miles an hour, which is not a big deal, except in a Cub, it, you really notice it because you're going so slow. So I'm now, I'm now uh, crabbing uh, into the wind and moving along the
the ground a little bit sideways, which may, uh, may show up in the camera. We'll, we'll see how... Sometimes it dies out as you get closer to these hills, sometimes it gets a lot worse. Actually, it looks like it's beginning to die down right here. So, it was just a current of air that was going down the valley, northwest to southeast across the Salt Sea. It's down to 18 miles an hour now. But, uh, you get all, all sorts of winds going all sorts of directions. Now out uh, around uh, 10 to 11 o'clock, you can see uh, the change in the way the rocks and the, and the dirt look. Uh, this is actually the area of the uh, San Andreas Fault, and you can't really, you can't see a clean fault line in this area, but you can see the re residue of what happens when these, all this rock gets pushed up vertically and creates these moon-like landscapes that we're seeing now down along the left side of the airplane. Really very pretty when you get the shadows coming across the blank they are right here. And if up in this area you can actually, where some of the rocks exposed, you can see uh, uh, Jack Yard Gun Aviation and Grizzly 07 King Air 07 taxiing on Fox Truck down to 35. You can see the rocks actually thrust up. This road uh, coming up down below us now is the, box, the entrance to Box Canyon Road. Box Canyon Road is, was flooded out last year. They completely rebuilt it. And it runs from Mecca, California up to uh, I 10, and it connects to I 10. Uh, just west of Chiraco Summit. Now, right down below to the left, you can see the vertical striations in the rock. That, that's rock on the San Andreas Fault that's basically pushed straight up. And its layers are vertical rather than horizontal. And just more of that it, as we go into Box Canyon. Right through this, this area, as I understand it, is actually where the fault is. Um, through the area of Box Canyon right here running. It would be running from my uh, right wing to the left wing, uh, northwest, southeast. see how this camera handles it. The, the GoPro Hero 7 got all confused making a steep, steep turn doing its stabilization. It would it would get jumpy w w when you were... Yeah, thermal traffic, Cessna 1774 Victor. We're uh, four miles to the uh, southeast at uh, 2,500, uh, descending to 2,000. We'll be uh, staying up against the hills over here. The GoPro would still stabilize, but it would stutter... St it's in the roll, you would see it stuttering as it tried to clip the frame and center it, and uh, we'll see how the, how the, uh, there that, we see the rock on the, on the left here, how the striations are pointing straight up. This is the fault right through here. And now off on the horizon, you can see, uh, take on traffic, Grizzly 07, King Air 07, taking uh, 3-5 for departure. See the salt sea as it, uh, 
reflects the uh, mountains in the distance. This is a clear day, but not a spectacular clear day. We're still... Yeah, traffic citation, triple three, Quebec Victor is 13 to the east. Again, we're going to overfly the field left base, 3-5, full stop, descending out of 6,000. There's still a bunch of smoke and haze in the area for all the California wildfires. It hasn't really fully blown out of here yet. So it's been a pretty hazy, smoky fall. Traffic. Okay, I just got a traffic alert. I got an airplane 900 feet above me. There he is. There's two of them, actually. There comes, I don't know whether... Someone stop it. This is 5-9 Alpha Mike helicopter. Camera picks it up. That's him right there. Terrible. I just put it there. Traffic, like Grizzly, 07 King, 07. There's a party on my 35 to the uh, northeast. And then the second one is, uh, I don't know whether they're together or not, but there's another airplane coming uh, a little bit higher. He's at, he's five, 400 feet higher than the one that just passed over me at 900 feet. And it looks like they're out here just playing around over the Salton Sea. So he, so the one that just passed me is still giving me a traffic alert. He's off my left wing at uh, 800 feet above me. Now he's turning back into me. Can't, you can't see it, but I've got this all displayed on the glass cockpit in front of me. So, thank goodness. Most everybody's putting 80. Cool stuff, hey, it's 259 Alpha Mike, turning left downwind, climbing out of 100, going southbound, so all. Most everybody's got ADSB now out here, which is great, because we're in a... Thermal traffic, citation, triple three, Quebec Victors, five to the east, overflight field, left downwind, three, five, full stop, thermal. We are in a radar-free area right here below these mountains. The Powell Springs radar doesn't get in here, so we're all on our own out here. And uh, we have to visualize, we could see each other ADSB to ADSB, being airplane to airplane, but we don't get any... Thermal traffic, 659 Alpha Mike is uh, midfield on 1230, right turn northwest bound, climbing through 500, thermal. We don't get any help from the radar because it can't see us here. Well, I take that back. I'm showing ADSB okay, so. Right now, I'm getting a signal out of Paul Springs. I guess it's just going to blink out here in a second because the mountain's going in, the way, uh, in between us. Thermal traffic, Rizzoli uh, 07, King 07 is uh, switching. So this is Salton Sea. California is the uh, largest environmental... Citation, triple three, Quebec Victors. Come a level of 1,000, overflying the field to the left. Downwind, 3-5, full stop, thermal. By the way, all that chatter... Uh, it's the season has started here in Palm Springs. All the snowbirds are coming in. And a lot of them are coming in with their private jets, so that's what you're hearing. Okay, this is the edge of the uh, largest environmental disaster to hit at California that they're trying to preserve now, even though it's a sticking, rotten mess. Um, luckily, it is receding, but as it recedes, it kills all the fish and causes all sorts of odor problems. You can see how much the shoreline is pulled back here from the historical levels. All the white area is where, is where the sea used to be. Um, a lot thermal of traffic. Citation triple three Quebec Victor is left downwind three five full stop thermal. But the environmentalists are all, yeah, thermal all traffic. confused. Uh, one seven seven four Victor. Oh. We're up against the hills about three miles to the south east southwest of the airport at one thousand five hundred. They're all confused about this lake, which was formed as a result of an industrial accident in around 1900 when a levee broke and a port let the Colorado River pour into the, this area, which is 200, well, let's see, 150 feet below sea level and just filled up this uh, basin with fresh water. And for years, the fresh water was pretty fresh, but after, with no outflow, it just gets more and more bracket, brackish. Look at all the birds here. And, uh, boy, they're having a feast. Something's 
Welcome down. Thermal traffic, citation triple three, goodbye sector, left base, three five, full stop, thermal. So now we're at 
Anytime this thing filled all the way up, uh, it would uh, reach the sand dunes down uh, in Baja California to the Gulf of Mexico and achieve sea level, which is then dump out into the uh, Gulf of California. So the water in here could never get higher than sea level. This is the uh, outskirts of the uh, urban area of La Quinta, California. Thermal traffic, uh, Baron 6 here, Yankee, uh, oh, from taking here. 3 5 for uh, Palm Springs departure. From here, just out on the horizon past I 10, is a rather densely populated area of, uh, of La Quinta. Off to the left would be Rancho Mirage. And Palm Desert, and eventually Palm Springs around the corner of those mountains up on the left. But this is La Quinta. A lot of high-end homes. It's this trilogy, as I recall, below us, a retirement community, but right off the nose coming up on the other side of this road is Andalusia, which is one of the last major developments to be put in here. You can see it's about half built out. It was just totally crushed in 2008. Uh, came to a complete standstill. And now they're building you know, five or ten houses a year. Here's a bunch of new ones off to the left. You can see down below the wing on the left side. This area up in here is the older section that was built prior to 2008. The clubhouse is off to the left. Traffic. Classic. 90107 is just uh, two miles to the west. Oh, well, that's, that's Andalusia. If I swing around... Thermal traffic. CSP 63 is going to be departing one, two, here. down the departure west now. We have the departing uh, airplane at, over the airport, and we're looking for the helo. From here on out to that mountain on the, uh, straight ahead of us is a P the PGA West Complex, which is a series of various you said you guys neighborhoods. One, seven. The hugest... One, two, sir. One, two. The biggest housing complex golf community in the... Uh, in the valley, and these are all there. All the are you on your pad right now? All the homes below us are uh, airplane. DJ West. There's so these are nice high end homes that go up to tens of millions of dollars in some places. That's on both sides of the road, but there's the PJ West Clubhouse. Thermal traffic, Cessna 738, Lima, November is about five miles to the south, planning a straight in um, landing for 35 thermal. PJ Clubhouse out there about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. Uh, thermal traffic, helicopter two whiskey. Uh, and is uh, over to X ray Alpha for the signature ramp. Right uh, on the nose out there about. Uh, well, where you see all the green. That's the Madison Club. The Madison Club is probably the highest end club in the valley. This is the only way you can see it. But these homes in here are 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 million dollar homes. These are huge estates down here. This is the only way you're going to see the Madison Club because you can't get in the gate unless you know somebody. But you can see, you can see these homes down here. They are monsters on monster lots and the landscaping is absolutely immaculate just a beautiful area so and it's getting built out but there's still some lots available if you've got the money now right in front of us now just past the madison club uh, are the polo grounds thermal traffic cessna 738 lima november we're about five miles to the and south. Turn, right here. Um, right base for is, uh, three five, four stops. This is where they uh, hold the Coachella and Stagecoach Festivals. You'll notice one little tubular thing up here, which is part of Coachella, but they rebuild it every year. This whole area turns into a big uh, parking lot slash camping area. And right up below the airplane and off the nose is where the stages are normally placed. And then more parking over on the other side. So this is the Coachella Stagecoach venue at the Polo Grounds here. Okay, I'm uh, now lined, uh, I'm on the extended center line of runway 1-2 at Thermal, so I'm going to do a right turn and establish myself on final for uh, 
Landing at uh, thermal. One, two. Our traffic comes to the me office, uh, extended five mile final, one, two, thermal, will be full stop, no factor, one, seven, three, five. Uh, signature, uh, helicopter two, R90107. Oh, uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up, but uh, it looks like I'm catching a bunch of bugs uh, here. Signature, helicopter 90107. On the windscreen. So uh, hopefully I haven't got any big bug in the middle of the GoPro if it's still running. But uh, we're now uh, 4.5 miles out from Thermal and probably under 4 miles to the touchdown area of 1-2 at Thermal, runway 1-2. So this is a carbon cub and as I said earlier the tire... Thermal traffic, 7 Lima November, short final, 3-5, full stop Thermal. Tires uh, wear out very quickly on pavement, so here at Thermal, as long as the wind's reasonably benign, I normally land in the dirt just before runway 1-2, so that's what you'll see here as I get uh, get up to the runway. Uh, landing in the dirt uh, spins up the tires much slower and uh, doesn't uh, erode the rubber off the tires as it does when you slap down on a, on a big hunk of asphalt and have you know, leave a skid mark as you spin up the tires. Uh, thermal traffic, come to my office, a two and a half mile final runway, one two, full stop, no factor, one seven three five. Gotta always tell them that because they get all hinky about landing crosswise here against their normal flows, one seven three five. Off to the left is a uh, the horse show venue here. They're currently got a horse show in progress. You can see all the uh, campers to the right and then to the left, all the stables. So these are show horses. This is the first year they've been here in November. Looks like a pretty good sized crowd. And that venue is right, a, right adjacent to the airport here. So we have the Thermal Club racetrack on one side and the horse show facility on the other, right here at Thermal. So lots of uh, ways to spend your money here. Come to Romeo's. Short final one, two, Thermal. Thermal traffic, Cessna 738, Lima November, clear of 35, taxi, thermal aviation via Foxtrot Alpha, Thermal. As I said, I land in the dirt out here, and you can see my prior landings out here because there's all these tracks up here in the uh, dust in the dirt. That's the landing in the Cub. Now, if I turn around here, you can see how much runway I used. And uh, I didn't really aggressively break it. So, so you can see the dust clearing. I just I snapped it down. This is really powdery, chalky dust out here. So it just, the airplane just sort of floats across that, that dust as it spins up its tires. And then I roll... Uh, up the hill to the runway and uh, turn off. Now we're going to taxi back to the hangar at uh, Thermal AV. Well, that's a ride in a carbon cub, hopefully, if uh, that GoPro is still running out there. So running at uh, uh, running a GoPro 8, at, uh, I'm running at a 4K 60 frames a second. It requires an enormous amount of electricity, and the camera gets hot to the touch. So its uh, ability to, as you're sitting just on the ground, uh, holding the camera, the ability to 
to do 4K60 very long is limited because the camera will overheat and shut down. But the camera uh, on, in this installation is sitting out on the wing in a 90 mile an hour wind, so it's c cooling itself. The net effect has been that uh, over a lot of trial and error, I've found that I can now uh, film indefinitely, uh, just only limited by the size of the SD card. And I've got a 128 gigabyte SD card in there, and that'll that'll allow me to record almost four hours at 4K resolution, 60 frames per second, which is amazing when you think about it. I've tried two 56K cards, but the the camera just apparently cannot handle that. No, it tends to shut shut down or throw an error and freeze, do that kind of thing, but. Uh, the fastest 128 gigabit, gigabit cards uh, tend to do very well. So we'll see, fingers crossed, when I get back, if it's still running or not. If it's not running because it froze, you won't hear any of this because it didn't happen.